What's up, everybody? Laura Sanko here, and I am in Texas, Houston, Texas, to be exact, backstage at the Toyota Center. And I am so excited because to, tonight is UFC 262, lightweight gold on the line, a vacant title. We have a new era starting, and I am so excited to be coming to you guys all night long with Wickets. But first, we got to start with our favorite guy, the man who takes care of our wallets, tells us where to put our money, what to stay away from. He's got the brightest smile in all of MMA. I'm talking about Yanni the Greek Corrales. Yanni, how you doing? Never better. And you caught me at a good time. I'm running hot right now. And even especially at MMA. I'm coming off a good week where now I'm ahead for the season again in the show. Uh, so hopefully it carries over into 262. This is a heavily bet card, Laura. There's not all that much going on right now in the sports world. You know, I mean, the NBA playoffs are around the corner. NHL yep. playoffs kind of starting, but it's not a heavy schedule yet. And baseball, it's kind of the lag season. So we're seeing so much betting action coming in today. And a lot of lines are moving because of it. And do you like that? You like seeing action in the market like that? Or does that make you stay away from some stuff? I love it. I love it. And not to disrespect casual bettors, but again, I've been here a long time and I'm around a lot of sharp bettors. And I know so few actually win. And the more casual money, like unsophisticated money is in a market, the more value there is for the sharper bettors. You know, it's kind of like at the poker tables in Vegas. The pros know someone comes in from out of town, they may have a couple hours. So they never sold two cards they don't like. That guy, he's got all day. He could sit at that table until he gets rolled up aces. And that's the difference between the casuals and the pros. And when the casuals are betting as heavy as they are right now, they truly affect the market more than a lot of uh, recreational bettors believe they, they do. That's what's behind a lot of these line moves today. I love it. I love it. Yanni is running hot. I feel like you're like a, a shark smelling blood in the water right now. <laughs> Let's talk about this fight tonight, okay? The main event, a vacant lightweight title. I feel like we have a new era in, in this division right now. It was the Habib era, era and now we're going to figure out whose era it's going to be moving forward. And two guys really who, you know, who haven't had perfect careers like we saw Habib have. They're imperfect heroes, but it feels like they're both at this perfect trajectory point in their careers to be crossing paths. I will say though, with Michael Chandler, not necessarily all UFC fans also follow Bellator. So they're maybe less familiar with the rest of, the, of his career, all the work he's put in. We've seen Charles Oliveira working in the UFC for over a decade. What are your thoughts on this main event and are you betting it? You touched on every point that matters, even from a betting perspective. And that's why I did bet the Michael Chandler side. But I bet it about a month ago at plus 130, Laura, because I expected the market to move in his direction because I thought more sharp bettors were, would agree with me. And the reason is that he's the unknown. Even for modelers, very efficient modelers, it's hard to weigh the data because the level of competition is different compared to what Oliveira is, at least over his last 26 fights, having been in the UFC. So that's where I think the, the odds makers didn't get it wrong. Their job is to protect the bookmakers and manage risk. And this is doing it because they're seeing good two-way action. But I think they got it wrong. I think Chandler, even analytics-wise, has at least the, the matchup wise should have an advantage here you know he's been unsubmissible more or less he's got that offensive and defensive wrestling and he's got so much power and that's kind of been the achilles heel for Oliveira a little bit i'm kind of comfortable getting him at plus money not the biggest bet i made though i like it i think in addition to everything that you said about michael chandler i think it's his mindset i know he's named after iron mike tyson but i, I feel like that iron at least in my mind, refers to his mentality. And man, is he incredibly focused coming into this fight. But like you said, Charles Oliveira, so many different weapons and his skill set that has been built in the fire of the UFC. I cannot wait to see how that one plays out. But we have a fantastic co-main event as well. And this was a little bit different story, right? This is more like, uh, you know, where, whereas before Chandler and Oliveira, are, these are their, this is their inflection point. This is a little bit more, we're figuring out where Benil, Neil Dariush is surging. Tony Ferguson, we're not sure where he's at in his career right now. And that question is going to get answered tonight. Benil Dariush, six fight win streak, so many of them finishes. And it's just so tough to do that in the UFC lightweight division. But how often is Tony Ferguson a dog ever? This Thank was crazy you. for me to see. 
Thank you. 17 of 18 UFC fights, he's been favored. In fact, it hasn't been since his debut that he's been an underdog. And to me, I think you got to give a guy a little bit of variance. We say it, there's tough stretches for everyone, regardless. And I could see if the market didn't overreact, meaning if he came out as the favorite again. But that's not the case. You're now getting him in the underdog role. And I think there's just too much value there to pass on, on Tony Ferguson. You're betting Darius as if Ferguson shot because to be profitable at this price, to have any margin, you have to conclude he beats Tony two out of three times. And I just don't think you can do that unless you only look at Tony's last two fights and nothing else. And we know you can't look at a small sample size. There's going to be variance. You got to trust the bigger one. So with, for me, I like the, the plus money with Tony. And I think he's live in this one as well. Absolutely no reason he can't win this fight, whether it stands striking or whether it hits the mat. At least that's what the numbers show. Completely agree. And I can tell you from being around him this fight week, he is, I know Tony's kind of always in his world, his own world, but he's in a different zone right now. He brought in Fred, Freddie Roach into his camp. He's really, he's really taken this to heart, shaking Good. things up on in terms of how he approaches the fight. And man, I really do feel like we're going to see the old school version of Tony Ferguson tonight. But man, Benil Darius, man, tough guy, you know, tough, very, tough guy. very, very tough out. And a and finisher, he, and a finisher. Absolutely, and he has more than earned his spot in this fight. So I'm excited to see what these guys get done. Um, my favorite type of bet always, because I am as casual as casual can be when it comes to betting. I like those high risk, high reward. I want to put in a little, a little bit. I want to get a lot out of it. So where should I be putting my money tonight for that type of bet? You know, I'm not a fan of parlays because again, I don't know anyone, myself included, that's up money betting parlays, but I love doing it because I got gamble in me like it's anyone fun. else. I'm not in this racket by accident, Laura. I got a little gamble in me as well. So I've got three fighters that are in need of a win. They're all underdogs. And if you tie them up together, you get nine to one on your money. And it's Kevin Aguilar, who, again, I know he's lost three in a row, but he was favored in those three against guys like Ige. I mean, come on, you got to give him some respect. And now a, a dog to a debut fighter who's only had Dana White contender series experience. Give me Aguilar. And then Andrea Lee. Why? I've been fading Antonita Shevchenko throughout her career. And here's the reason. You are paying a premium to back her, even though she's won 67% of her fights in the UFC. If you blindly bet against Antonina, you are up money. You've done nothing else but just bet against Antonina. You are up money, even Is though she's won. Exactly. She's priced higher than she should be. And that's the bottom line. I think a lot of casual bettors don't look at the price. If they go in and they want to bet a guy at minus 150, if he's at minus 200, they'll still bet them, not realizing they lost 7% of margin. And no one even has a 5% edge long term, let alone a 7% edge, but they'll still bet it. And bookmakers know this. So how do they beat you? They shade towards those biases and they jack up the price. Win or lose, Lee gives us value. And finally, Bontanarian against Matt Schnell. Schnell's getting so much public money and I just don't agree with it. His uh, Achilles heel has been someone with power. And I think that's at least what the, the numbers show that Bontanarian can land that bomb. I think that happens. We'll lock those three up, get nine to one on our money. Or you could be conservative and straight bet them all for a little bit. You win two out of three, you come out nicely ahead. I think, too, with Bontarin, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I want to say uh, that often fighters who miss weight, I'm not saying that that's a thing we should look to do, but often fighters who miss weight are the ones who end up coming out on top statistically. Am I right? Is that a real especially, thing? Yes, especially if it, they haven't killed themselves. You could yeah. tell sometimes when someone's killed themselves to lose that last five ounces and when yeah. they just didn't for that late. Everyone says that last pound's the hardest, that last two pounds. And sometimes if they forego that, they have an edge. And I like, I like it, it as an underdog. So the angel of death, KGB Lee and Hogerio Bonserine, that is a nice little parlay there. I'm excited for that one. And lastly, the best bet. What What is the safest? What's the bet that you are most confident about on this entire card? I'm on an island, but I believe I'm right. And I did my job. At least the market proves this. I gave out a big bet on Shane Burgos at minus 130. He's up to minus 150, minus 160 right now. Wow. So now he has to go in there and do his job and beat Edson Barbosa. Listen, I'm a Barbosa fan, but you're paying for that name in this spot. He's only won two of his last seven fights. That's less than 30% win rate. 
And the bottom line is, as an underdog, he has not come through for back, his backers. He's only won once in his last four times that the odds makers expected him to lose. That's what they expect in this one. I like Shane Burgos, the rebound. It's a good spot for him. That, let me tell you, my friend, that is a ballsy bet, and I like it. I Yachty's got the cojones. He's sitting there on that uh, beautiful island by himself, throwing back a, a little bit of howler head. Perhaps. We'll see what happens, whether I drown or not. <laughs> I'm waving at you from a boat, I, I, <laughs> but I applaud, I applaud your willingness to, to go on a limb like that. I, I, and it's not that I think you're crazy. I really don't. I personally feel like that fight, I mean, those two are finished. They're going to bang. Oh, yeah. They're going to bang. The yeah, they're going for 75 grand, those two. That's they're, they're, right. I know. How fun that we have this raise and the bonuses. I love it. Betters are talking it. about it. I swear oh, to you. I've gotten like five DMs asking me, do you think there's any extra value we could extract anywhere because yeah. of this? Like certain fighters that are going to push for that finish but 75 grand 75 grand there's people that work hard all year and don't make that kind of money and if you can make that in one night by doing some damage i know a lot of these guys are going to raise their hand and say i'm willing to do some damage for 75 grand so it may change the way things play out i'm going to watch early on to see if some guys go for broke early and then we may jump in some live action because of it I like it. I think the fans too, the fans being here. I mean, we saw that at UFC 261. I feel like it was no coincidence at all that that was one of the most incredible cards of the year. It was like the fighters saying, thank you, yep. you know, to having the fans back. So I expect nothing less tonight. Yanni, thank you so much as always for helping us take care of us, take care of our wallets. And the guys, keep it locked in right here. Head on over to ESPN Plus. The early prelims are already kicking off. But before you do that, I want to take you on a little uh, backstage arena tour. So let's check it out.